Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Sound Guy Barry. And once again, I want to talk about microphones. I'd like to introduce you to a special purpose microphone, kind of an unusual mic. And it's the mic that I'm using for this video right now. It's the Crown PZM microphone, a pressure zone microphone. This is a boundary condenser microphone. It's a flat plate, looks like that. And this microphone is designed to solve a problem that we have with standard microphones. And that problem is, if you have a standard microphone like one of these, this is a Shure 57, but it's just an example, you could use any mic, and if you imagine that this mic was mounted on a stand picking up a sound source, well, it's going to get sounds from the source, which might be my vocals, for example, but then it's also going to be picking up reflected sound off of the walls or floor surfaces in the room. So the sound from my voice hits the microphone, and then just a brief moment later, sound will reflect off of the walls and come into the mic as well. And those reflected sounds will merge with the primary sound, and they'll blend together in a way that's not particularly wonderful. It'll create a comb filtering effect, which will have the effect of producing a ragged high frequency response. And so how do we prevent sounds from coming off of the walls and joining the sound source that's coming into the microphone? Well, I think the obvious answer is to put the microphone into the wall so that we can't get reflected sounds off of the wall. Now that's probably not too practical. So the boundary microphone was invented, which is a flat plate and a microphone element mounted just a minuscule different distance off of that plate and so the sounds will hit the plate and it will not pick up other reflected sounds quite so much. So the boundary microphone has a way of eliminating some of those room reflective sounds that are coming into the mic and it produces a cleaner, clearer sound, particularly in the high frequency range. So boundary microphones tend to have a very clean and clear and flat high frequency response. However, boundary microphones do need to be mounted on a boundary, meaning this microphone is intended to be placed against a wall, taped to the ceiling, set on the floor, or against some kind of larger boundary surface. And in order to produce proper low frequency response, the boundary surface that this microphone is plied against must be fairly large. In order to have full range bass response, you can work the math out, there's equations for it, but basically the boundary surface needs to be about four foot square or larger in order to get full deep bass response out of a boundary microphone like this Crown PZM. Now, of course, if you use a smaller boundary, you'll have a drop-off in the low frequencies, and sometimes you could actually use that as an intended effect if you wanted to roll off the lows. For example, if I was using these microphones to pick up drum overheads, I um, might not actually want to get all that bass into these microphones, and so you know, hanging them over the drums on some smaller panels, that might actually be effective. So to use these microphones, they need to be placed against a boundary surface. And that sometimes creates a complicated situation in a lot of miking situations. And so the usability is a little bit limited by that fact. But there's a lot of applications where these mics work really well. Such as if you want to mic a piano, you could tape one to the inside lid of the piano close to the strings. And uh, that would get really clean, clear, high frequency response does a great pickup on the piano, and uh, it's a convenient placement option. I've also used them successfully for drums, both uh, attached to the ceiling as drum overheads, in which case I think they work really well to pick up the metal. They also actually work pretty well for picking up drums if you just simply place them on the floor in front of the drum kit, and you can move them around a little bit to get the balance that you're looking for. Also works pretty good for kick drum pickup by just placing it in front of the kick drum. Shure makes a version of this mic, which is intended to be a kick drum mic. I believe it's the SM91, and uh, that works really well also. So it's kind of an interesting mic. Um, uh, oh, another application is for room ambient pickup. They do a really good job of that. 
a while ago I recorded a stand-up comedian and I wanted to make sure that I got really good crowd pickups so I could uh, get the audience applause and laughter clean and clear. So I mounted a couple of these microphones up against the side walls of the venue and they did a fantastic job of picking up the audience sounds. And so of course blending that in with the stage microphones produced a great sounding recording. So they're really good for ambient pickup. Now, of course, the downside of these microphones is that they have to be placed in a boundary. And uh, because of their design, they do get a little bit longer reach. That is, the microphone can be further away from the sound source than a standard microphone can be before picking up too much room ac acoustics. However, you know, they're not a, a magic bullet either. So you need to be relatively close to your sound source if you want clean pickup like any microphone. And because of the constraints of having to put the microphone against a boundary surface, it's often difficult to have a recording situation where you have the sound source close to the boundary surface and you can get a good pickup. There's a lot of cases where you can. For example, you could put this microphone right in front of your guitar amplifier on the floor, and that would work well. But if you want to pick up vocals, for example, you'd have to do something like put the microphone against a wall and have the singer sing at the wall. And that might be a little bit of an unusual situation, a little uncomfortable. So, like I say, they have somewhat limited usability because of their placement constraints. But in situations where the placement constraints work okay for your situation, I think they work out really great. And they're kind of an interesting and unique microphone and certainly a worthy addition to your collection of mics. So, if you have the opportunity to work with or acquire some pressure zone or boundary microphones it's um interesting and i think that it's something that you probably should pursue and check out it's a useful tool for sure oh another application that it's really useful in is for recording a conference where you have a bunch of people sitting around a table you can put one or two of these in the center of the table and they'll do a great job of picking up the conversations around them and somewhat minimizing the uh, the room effect. Anyway, I thought it was an interesting artifact of history and uh, something that I would share with you is um, kind of an interesting mic. I don't use them in live sound situations very often because they do tend to have omnidirectional pickup and they're not real great for rejecting feedback. Um, but for recording, they work really well. I should also mention that there's a lot of companies out there who make boundary microphones and they're all based on the same principle as this crown and uh, they probably all work pretty well. You'll find that if you look at the frequency response plots of most boundary microphones they're generally quite flat and quite extended. So uh, if you have an application where the mic will fit you can probably get a pretty good pickup of that instrument with a boundary microphone like the Crown PZM Pressure Zone mics. should also mention that one of the most popular versions of the Pressure Zone microphone was a version that was put out by Radio Shack back in the day, which was a consumer microphone. It's nowhere near, in my opinion, as good as the professional microphones from Crown. It um, had an unbalanced output, but it does let you experiment with the Pressure Zone microphone or boundary microphone concept and uh, they do work well. So I thought you'd find that somewhat interesting and um, like I say if you have the opportunity to acquire some boundary microphones I would certainly advise that uh, you add them to your arsenal of mics if you have the opportunity to do so and uh, it seems like a good uh, purchase for you. I think you'll find it to be interesting and useful in certain applications. So I hope that was interesting, and I'll catch you again on another episode of Sound Advice. My name is Barry. I'm a sound engineer in the Minneapolis, St. Paul, Twin Cities area. If you have questions about boundary microphones or comments, or if you want to share one of your experiences, I would certainly encourage you to comment below. If you'd like assistance or help with anything, and especially if you're in the Minneapolis, St. Paul area, I'd be happy to help you out. And I hope that you take a moment to subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to be notified when new videos come down, make sure to tap the bell icon so YouTube will shoot you an email when new stuff comes down. And I appreciate you tuning in and sticking around. 
and watching the video. I hope to see you again soon on another episode. Take care.